Universal Studios is full of attractions that keep us coming back over and over. But winners get ice cream, and not all attractions at Universal Studios get ice cream. So what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to rank the top five worst attractions at Universal Studios. The first attraction in fifth place is it's Kane true. and Kodo's Trolling Call. This ride is based off of an episode of The Simpsons Tree House of Horror, and the storyline is that Kane and Kodo tricked riders onto the attraction, and the only way to get off is by attacking Springfield. This ride lasts a total of two minutes, and honestly, that's about two minutes too long. Easy, that's a little harsh. Like. I'm in at 52 long. <laughs> the aesthetic fits in perfectly with the rest of Springfield, but the ride is just too generic. Yeah, so this is one of those attractions that you can find pretty much anywhere else. Like, it's just a different variant. You'll see them at other theme parks or local carnivals and fairs. The only difference is Universal's version is probably a little bit safer because it wasn't built last night, and more than likely, they didn't have a bag of screws left over when they got done building it. It does have a few redeeming factors though, like the views from the top of the spaceships, especially if you get a chance to ride this at night. Also, this is one of the only attractions that doesn't have a height requirement. So children under a certain height do have to have an adult ride it with them. But if you have littles, this is something that they can actually do in the parks. Also, the funny names on the back of the spaceships like Barf Simpson always give us a laugh as well. The next attraction in fourth place is Woody Woodpecker's <laughs> Nut House Coaster. That name gets me every time. It's almost as bad as Hagrid's. You mean Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Yeah, that one. Oh. <laughs> this ride is back in the kids zone by E.T. Adventure. And if we're being honest, we forget that it even exists yeah. most of the time. But fun fact, did you know this was the very first roller coaster that was ever built in Universal Studios? Yeah, it feels like it too. We had a chance to ride this with our five-year-old nephew back in October, and it was a lot rougher than we expected. I spent the majority of the ride worrying that he was going to hit his head on the ride vehicle when we took some of those turns. That track is definitely feeling its age. This ride lasts a total of 44 seconds, but it's just not as successful as some of the other kiddie attractions in the parks. For example, Flight of the Hippogriff is a very similar attraction that was just executed much better. And part of that could be the fact that it's 11 years newer, but we feel like with a little bit of a refurb that Woody Woodpeckers could be just as successful. Yeah, you just need like a little bit of paint, maybe bring in a totally different IP, just retheme it, um, and then maybe like a bulldozer and just knock that one down and build something new and it's right up there yeah absolutely <laughs> there's obviously a need for kid-centered attractions in the parks but this one just falls short for us with its outdated theming and track that is almost as old as i am in third place the next attraction has to be despicable me minion mayhem now this is probably somewhat of an unpopular opinion solely based on the wait times that this attraction still sees but if we're being honest our favorite part of the entire ride is the exit when you have that little dance party, yeah, you know that we love that. <laughs> Our biggest gripe with Minions at this point is the 3D effects. We actually used to be really big fans of this attraction, but back in 2019, Universal took away the 3D aspect of this ride and converted the footage to 2D. Not only did this take away from the immersiveness of the attraction, but this is the closest that I have ever come to getting motion sickness, and that's saying something for me because I could literally eat a dozen donuts nuts and ride the Hulk without getting sick. So needless to say, we've only ridden this a handful of times since they made uh, that change. All right, challenge accepted. <laughs> if this video gets a thousand likes, we will have Anna eat a dozen donuts and then go ride the Hulk. Deal. The storyline is adorable though, and if you never got to experience the ride with the 3D effects, you won't have anything to compare it to, so you might enjoy it as much as we used to. The queue does have some pretty well-timed jokes. We're not gonna lie, the minions do make us laugh, and it gets you out of the heat for a little bit, so it's not all bad. Plus, with the construction walls that Universal just put up around Shrek, it's pretty obvious that the minions aren't going away anytime soon, so we'll just continue to hope that Universal brings back the 3D version of this ride. Next up in second place is Race yeah. to New York starring Jimmy Fallon. We're ranking this as the second worst attraction in Universal Studios, and we honestly enjoy it. We feel like that speaks volumes to how incredible most of the attractions are here. Jimmy Fallon's gets a lot of flack as a terrible ride, and we think that most of it is undeserved. Most of it's undeserved. 
the fact is it replaced one of my favorite attractions, which was Twister, which just so happened to replace one of my favorite attractions as a child, which was Ghostbusters. So there's like two levels of hate here. It's like resentment -ception. <laughs> We especially love the queue in Jimmy Fallon's because you get to sit down instead of having to stand while you wait. It's one of the best queues. And they also have TVs and games to keep you entertained. We also love the roots wrapping the safety precautions, and this ride has some of the best 3D effects at the entire resort. So after singing its praises in multiple areas, you may be wondering why we've ranked Jimmy Fallon's in second, and there are a few different reasons. One of which is that a lot of people suffer from motion sickness on this attraction. Now, we've never personally had an issue here, which is saying a lot for Tyler, but there have been several instances where we've had to wait to get into the theater because they're having to do a cleanup, and it's really hard to enjoy the attraction when you know that someone literally just threw up in there. Also, if you don't know who Jimmy Fallon is or if you don't really watch the show, you're gonna be kind of lost or confused throughout the entire attraction. Um, we heard somebody once say that they thought it would have been better if it was a stage show or if they just had implemented live actors, and we have to say that we agree. Also, it's the only attraction in studios that's basically like all virtual line. You, you have to have a virtual line to ride it unless you have Express Pass. So that's just a little inconvenient, especially if it's your first time in the park, then you have to learn how to do the virtual line system and it just can get kind of confusing. If you're enjoying this video, if you would, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. We talk about all things Donuts. theme parks here, so if that's something you're interested in, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. Also, we've limited this list to just attractions in Universal Studios, so if you would like to hear our list of the worst attractions in Islands of Adventure, go ahead and leave us a comment down below. Before we get to number one, we do have a bonus attraction that almost made the list, and that's The no! Simpsons Ride. We want so desperately to enjoy this attraction. We love everything in Springfield, and the story behind the ride is great, but it incites motion sickness in about half of the people that ride it. It doesn't. It does. That's one for two, that's 50%, and that is math. <laughs> the 3D aspect is so outdated in this attraction and in desperate need of an update. We avoid this ride like the plague because it literally takes Tyler like an hour to feel better because it makes him so sick. But for people that can stomach this attraction, it is a must do in the parks. And finally, the number one worst attraction in Universal Studios has to be Fast and Furious Supercharged. We always tell people that every attraction at Universal is worth experiencing at least once, and this honestly might be the only exception to that rule. I, I still think it's worth experiencing once because everybody likes different things, so you might enjoy it, but also you just want to be able to join in on this conversation. We just feel like Universal did such an injustice to the Fast and Furious franchise with this attraction. Yeah, in a franchise that's about racing cars, you would think that you would be racing cars, but instead they threw us in a party bus and the only thing we really have to worry about is that RC helicopter that Vin Diesel is hanging from. On top of this, the acting is terrible, the storyline makes no sense, and the graphics are unrealistic at best. The only redeeming factors about this attraction is the queue. They have some pretty awesome cars in the garage that are cool to see in person, and the live actors always do a great job of setting the scene. But once you get on the party bus, it's all downhill from there. And if you know anything about gravity or physics, you know that a party bus is heavy and that thing is moving. <laughs> I guess you could also give it some points for accessibility because this attraction doesn't have any height requirements, but that's being a little bit generous. By some miracle, there's a small, like really small group of loyal fans that find this attraction entertaining on some level, but you could have asked us to pick any ride at the parks to be replaced and we would have picked it over Shrek. Unfortunately, we don't see Fast and Furious leaving the parks anytime soon because it is so new and Universal spent so much money building it. So in the meantime, it'll just have to remain the butt of all of our Universal jokes and we'll have to continue to dream of it being replaced by a night bus attraction at some point in the future. That's a party bus I can get down with. <laughs> All right, guys, that wraps up today's video. Leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know, how many donuts do you think Anna will eat before she actually gets sick? <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. You can hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so you get an alert every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching. She might get four. <laughs>